Hello, I'm Matt, and in this video we are going to be making a mechanism that allows you to do this. If that's not cool, I don't know what is. Now, this isn't just for the cool factor. Yes, it's like something out of Thunderbirds, but it's also incredibly practical. For example, this is my work desk and where I film all of my videos pretty much. And uh, usually I've had to disconnect my monitors, keyboard and mouse, and move them out of the way and then put, uh, you know, set up my lights and stuff. But having a switch that allows you to just make the monitor disappear is just fantastic. And you can even put a platform back on top, giving you even more desk real estate. So without further ado, let's get building it. Keep in mind that as this is a budget build, we'll be using cheap, commonly available parts to keep the cost low, and you can find purchasing links to them all in the description. So the first thing we'll need to work on is the base that houses most of the lift mechanism. Its construction is quite simple, consisting of two long planks screwed to a set of end pieces, with boards attached to the top and bottom to keep things square. To the inside of this base in the middle, we can now mount a motor that will move the platform up and down. This particular motor has a high torque at a relatively low RPM, giving it plenty of strength to raise and lower the platform at a suitable speed. We now need a variety of pulleys and wheels. The first one can be fitted onto the motor itself and can be held in place with the included grub screws and a bit of thread lock. With that done, we now need to attach the smooth, free-running idler pulleys to some large right-angle brackets using some nuts and bolts. These need to have some thread lock or super glue added so that they won't loosen over time, after which they can be bolted to the base just opposite the motor. You'll see what they're for in just a minute. So now we need a plank of wood, on which the monitors will later sit. This can be clamped to the base, flush along all the edges, and the middle at each end can be marked and then drilled through, going right into the boards underneath. With that done, we now need two bearings that have an internal hole, or bore, measuring 12mm. We need to use a spade bit to expand the holes in the boards to match the size of these bearings so that they can slide freely through, even if a little stiffly. To give them something to rest on, however, we'll need to bolt three flanged screws in place from underneath so that their heads slightly overlap the edge. The bearing should now rest securely onto these screws and be perfectly level. To keep them from popping out again, we can simply use three self-tapping screws to lock them in place. We now need two lengths of 12mm diameter threaded bar. These will support the monitor platform itself, which is why we're going with quite a large diameter for the extra strength. The first thing to do is trim them down so that they're just slightly shorter than the desk itself. To keep the thread intact, a nut needs to be first added so that it restores the thread when it gets removed. Once this has been done for both of them, we need a pair of locking nuts. These are quite stiff to thread onto the bars, so wrap each bar in a strip of wet paper towel before clamping it inside a workbench. Now a spanner can be used to thread on the nuts. These nuts support the entire weight of the platform and monitors, and thanks to the bearing the whole thing should spin freely. The next thing to add is a pulley to each bar. These have a 12mm central hole and can be locked to the bars using their included grub screws, though if you experience slipping you may need to add another M12 nut underneath for some extra support. Now we need a timing belt for the pulleys, which should be easy to get hold of as they're commonly used in 3D printers and CNC devices. It can simply be threaded over the pulleys and then through the motor mechanism like so. Where they meet in the middle, they can simply be cut with a slight overlap, ready to be joined together. <laughs> There's no perfect way of doing this, so if you can think of a better way of doing it, feel free to use your own method. The first way I tried was to burn the rubber so that it crumbled away from the inner tension threads, and with these exposed on both ends, I thatched them together as one, and then used some glue to permanently bond them. 
This wasn't a bad plan, but the glue I used wasn't strong enough, so it was able to be broken without too much effort. So instead, I ended up using some fishing line to sew the two pieces together, which was much stronger and didn't cause any problems with the pulley system, despite the slight overlap. So with the belt now in place, it's time to work on the platform itself, and for it to glide freely up and down, guided by the threaded bars, we need two pairs of pronged captive T-nuts. Each pair needs to be mounted onto a block with a hole down the centre, which needs to be slightly countersunk on one side. Four holes need to be drilled into this for the prongs to fit into, so that the nuts can be pulled in place with a clamp. With just one added you can see that it wobbles quite a bit on the bar, but after adding another nut to the other side, this is greatly reduced. Now we can get our platform and widen the holes we made earlier, so that it can slide freely onto the threaded bars. The blocks themselves can now be screwed to its underside, which allows the platform to be supported by the bars instead, and when you manually pull the belt it will begin to descend. Looking good, but holy moly it's a bit wobbly. To solve this we need to get some right angle aluminium bars and screw them to the corners of the base so that they act like guides. To help the stability even more, we can also glue in place a cross piece, which in my case is just a thin piece of aluminium. As you might have noticed, the tops of the aluminium angles have grooves cut into them. These are purely for supporting the extra shelf you saw earlier. This extra shelf needs to have the underside at the corners sanded down to make it easier to slide in place, and also two screws added to each end so that it can rest inside the grooves. Now as we want the lift itself to stop automatically at the top and the bottom, we need some push switches that break the circuit when pressed basically acting like limit switches. These can be mounted to slotted pieces of wood, which allows them to be adjusted up and down to fine tune the stop points later. These little buttons can be activated by a little piece of wood attached to the lift platform with a right angle bracket. The motor and buttons now need to be wired up to a three position power switch, and you can find a guide and a schematic for this in the description. Once it's wired up and connected to a power brick, flipping the switch will send power to the motor, which raises the platform. Once it hits the topmost button, it breaks the circuit and the lift immediately comes to a stop. Flipping the switch the other way will reverse the polarity and the lift will begin to descend. Again, once it hits the bottom switch, the lift stops moving. This whole process is remarkably smooth, and it supports a surprising amount of weight. Now all that's left to do is place it behind the desk and use some screws on the front aluminium bars to lock the whole thing in place. This makes the platform itself exceptionally solid, and it feels like it's actually part of the desk itself. And really, it's not bad at all considering it's such a simple DIY build. The switch can now be mounted underneath the desk with a right angle bracket. Now with the flip of a switch, your monitor can raise up and you'll have pretty much the coolest desk in your neighbourhood. So that's it for this video, I hope you've enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed making it, and don't forget to check out audio blocks if that kind of thing catches your interest. Now if you're wanting another video of mine to watch, then why not check out this one, in which we make some really nice looking mushroom lights. Other than that, I'm Matt, you've been watching DIY Perks, and I hope I see you next time. Goodbye for now.